it's going to be alright. So turn to your neighbor and say it's going to be alright. You didn't say it with an English accent, try it again. It's going to be alright. Bless the name of Jesus. Uh, first, I want to congratulate Rock of Ages for this, your mm. anniversary. Put your hands to the <laughs> Some churches open and less than a year they close. So for God to have given you the same power that some 20 something years later you could still be present and on the scene God has been gracious amen, amen. hallelujah I am going to foundate the house uh, I hear today that we have a, 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 a theme which is called embracing the call to greatness oh my goodness um, can I tell you I'm excited about this word I don't know who chose it I, you, did you pick it Pastor Elliot let me shake your hand because that was Listen, the spirit was troubling me with the, oh, bless the name of Jesus. That was an awesome, awesome topic. I don't know if you're excited. I get excited for the word of God. Are you excited for the word of God? I just want, if you would stand with me for a moment as we read from Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. Matthew chapter 20, from verse 25 to 28. When all is found, please say, Amen. Amen. Y'all lied in church. Y'all did not find anything. You didn't even open your Bibles. I said, when you find it, say amen. Y'all lying in church. Y'all ain't found nothing. Y'all didn't even ask Siri. You didn't look in Google. You didn't find nothing. So this time we're going to tell the truth. I said, when you find Matthew chapter 20, from 25 to 28, then you say amen. You ready? Let me get that. 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 This is called interactive preaching. Amen. amen. When all is found, say amen. amen. Some people said hallelujah. Wow, we don't find <laughs> But we're going to move on in Jesus' name. Amen. Young people, y'all all right? I see the drum is cracking up over here. We're going to have a good time in Jesus' name. I believe the word of God is supposed to be enjoyable. Right? Right? Right. Amen. amen. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. And it reads, But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Be rest of the 28 verse of the honor and glory of God. May he have his blessing to the reading of this word as we say, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Sit down quickly because we got to jump right in. Hallelujah. Where's the water? Where's the water? Bless the Lord. Is the water good? That was a question you can answer back. Is the water good? Yes. Would you say that water is great? Yes. Are y'all jealous because you don't have any water? <laughs> you have water, Mother Ezra? Go ahead and sip the water. Water is great. Here's the thing about water. Take it back a bottle. Here's the thing about water. Water is great. It can be used for so many different things, right? Um, water can be used to wash, we take a bath with it, we cleanse, we wash our hands, right? We use it to prepare our vegetables and everything before we want to cook. Eh? Yeah, Not so? Yeah. Right. It's great. If we don't have water and we're dehydrated, what happens? We pass and all, all kind of thing. And so? Not so? Yeah. You're going to eat your and die in there. Yeah. Right. Let us not forget, I live in Brooklyn, but I is a tree. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to hit you with a little Americanness because that is where I live. Amen? Amen. Um, the thing is, in order for water to be effective for us in our health, we have to consume it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
so then it is the consummation of the water that makes the greatness. Oh boy. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see if I can help the church. Yes, um, because water in the bottle is great. But unless I consume then it's any for any purpose. Unless I consume some of the water, mm -hmm. I don't have great inside of me. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to y'all got it in the back? Mm -hmm. You got it in the back? I have to consume it for it to be great. The great has to leave this and come into this for me to cons for me to be empowered by the greatness. I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help you. Um, and then some of us, you know, the problem with this is that uh, we are looking, you know, the doctor might go and tell you when you visit, you need to drink more water. Um, and that some of the reason why you have the high BP and all of that, you're not consuming yeah. enough water. Yeah. Um, the reason why the church is under pressure is because we have forgotten how to consume Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> we busy looking to be the greatest yeah. when we have not even consumed yeah. the great. Yeah. 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 We worried about who gets to sit up front. We worried about who got what title. We worried about how the uniform looks and how big my head tie is and how if they're gonna let me sit on the rostrum. But we have not been yet concerned with greatness is consumed by me, by me having Jesus inside of me. You can't be the greatest unless you know the greatest of all time. Help me up here. <laughs> the thing is, greatness is the application of the greatest, I should say, is the application of the greatness to a situation. We want to be the greatest. Can I tell you something? Nothing is wrong with wanting to be the greatest. The disciples asked Jesus. be the greatest. Jesus did not rebuke. Jesus didn't say, y'all shouldn't ask that. He didn't say, oh, go sit down somewhere. What, what you trying to do? Jesus gave them an answer. He said, if you want to be the greatest, if you really want to be the best of the best, if you really want to be on top of the top, you've got to get to a place where you're like this little child. There's too much grown folk in God's house. Oh, God. Because the leader can't tell you what to do. The mother can't tell you to wait your turn and grow. Because we come in here already knowing everything. Hmm. Magnify them all in me. We have to magnify what is already in you. Can't magnify something you don't possess. Amen. We here trying to be super Baptists. We want to outshout people. We want to. Up. We want to be extra. But meanwhile, you don't have the, the, the thing in your capacity to be magnified. We don't got the foundation, the Bible said, if the foundation be destroyed. Y'all hmm. don't want to help me up in here. I know they wanted me to come last year. I think after this year, they're going to be the pastor go back. Let's talk about Brother Joseph. Joseph was called to greatness in a dream. Not so? Yeah. Joseph was called to greatness in a dream. He saw himself where his brothers, his parents were bowing to him. That was his call to greatness. But just because at that time he was called to it didn't mean that the greatness manifested. Amen. Some of us, we get called to the greatness and we think tomorrow the church needs to be handed over to us. Can I tell you that? 
Amen. 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 Let me let me talk to the people outside. Greatness cannot be personified until we begin to what? Serve. Serve. Say it. Y'all just making sure they're paying attention outside. What do you mean? Somebody say, what you mean, Pastor? What you mean, Pastor? Thank you for asking. <laughs> Joseph served his father. His father sent him on messages. Sent him as an errand boy. But you see, when we receive the call to greatness, we don't want to be the messenger for nobody. Who the mother thinks she is to tell me to do why and say, they can't tell you anymore to, 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 to come and help wipe the bench in the church because you got a call to greatness. The Bible tells me that Joseph served his brothers as well as his brothers was handling big people walk. Yes, yes, yes. We just have elder brothers and sisters in the house. And we just disregard them because we get a call to greatness. But unless you learn to serve those that are in authority over you, you're not ready yet. Joseph had to go in the field and carry lunch. Yes, yes. If the church asks you to make us sweet bread, you should sin. Huh? I came to help the church. I'm trying to help the church. Joseph, when he found himself in captivity, he served his slave owner. Some of us, when we are in difficulty, we don't know anymore how to be humble. We don't know anymore how to serve. We don't know anymore how to see the people around us who might be in need of our help because we're so consumed with being in bondage. But you have not achieved greatness until you could be under chains, till you could be in pressure, until you could be under oppression and still see that you're never in a better prayer and still see that you're worthy of his glory and love. And if you have not experienced dark times and still been able to serve someone else, sit down. get in trouble with Potiphar. Mm -hmm. And the slave owner put him in jail. He find himself in a dark place. Things went from worse to worse yet. And while he was there, the word tells me that he had a good report with the jailkeeper. Because as much as he knew the dream that he dreamed, as much as he knew the call on his life, he said, you know what? This is the situation that I am in. Paul says it the best. Whatever state I find myself in, there is to be content. And he abased himself before the jail keeper. And he served him. He served him that he became like the right hand to the heaven. I pray that those that understand the greatness that you have on your life, that even those that are trying to oppress you have no choice but to promote you. While he was there, a 
again, he saw beyond his condition. Greatness is being able to look beyond yourself. We are so concerned with ourselves that we miss the whole purpose. He was in a situation and when he looked, he realized that the banker was having some difficulty. And so the CMI opened up his eye. And he said, come let me read the business for you. Eh? He didn't have no candle. He had no powder. He didn't have a glass of water. But he opened his eye. And he began to read the story. They were both in the same position. Oh, come on. In the same position. But he served the baker. And he served the cup bearer. How many of us have enough humility that somebody in the same rank with you that you could lower yourself to serve the whole cup? <laughs> Mothers don't want to talk to mothers again in church. Leaders not talking to leaders. We're sitting on different side of the church. We ain't looking in that direction at all. We come into church week after week. Can't say good morning. We see the leader thirsty. And you is a leader too. But because you're vexed that you is not the chief leader. You can't give the leader no water. I realize it's difficult for some of us to say amen. I'm going to amen myself. Pastor Jeff, you're preaching good. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't want to amen me, I will amen myself. I'm a whole church by myself. Amen. Somebody say praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> You know what was interesting about Joseph? Joseph eventually becoming the prime minister of Egypt, he did not stop serving even though he became exalted. Even as the prime minister, he still had to serve someone. He served the Pharaoh, he served the people. When you are to be great, it's not about how much people can come to you. It's about how many people you can go to. <laughs> Here's what I like, here's what I like, here's what I like. He didn't use no manipulation to get there. He didn't use people to get there. He didn't disrespect others in order to get there. Meekness, humility, lowliness. Those were the only tools that were needed to embrace the call to his greatness. Likewise, we don't need all of these other things. We don't need the trappings. We don't need the super big, the extra large aprons. We don't need the floor length veil. We don't need the biggest cross in order to validate our call. Those things are nice, they have their place. What we need is humility. Because if we don't see the mark of humility on your life, then your call looks suspect. I don't think you heard me. Some of us are operating under counterfeit greatness. We only take it out when we're about to come to church. Oh God. <clears throat> And we put on this front. But when we at home, we cussing the neighbors. When we at home, we sleeping with the neighbors. Come on, Chuck. Church. Trying to help the church. Some of us see serving as a stepping stone to greatness. Did would you 
Right? Yeah. You're wrong. Serving is not a stepping stone to greatness. Serving is greatness. Some of us want to use serving as a means of manipulating the church into giving us positions and titles that we want. I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm talking. <laughs> Let me, let, me, let me talk to leadership over here, right? Let me, let me talk to people who hold a little bit of weight in the house, right? So the thing is, sometimes people will manipulate you by trying to be extra of service to you. Because they figure if they can, if I can, if I can come in, I can, mother, how can I help you, mother? How can I help you? And so mother's like, she's so sweet. She's so tall, look at her. The grace of God is on her, oh my God. Right? But when mother's not looking, you be like, move out the way. Why are you trying to get close to mother? You think you don't want to step out. Do you know that there are bullies in church? There are people that will, when they see that the grace of God is moving on your life, and God is exalting you and moving you from one step to another, they will find ways to switch between you and your mental, you and your victory, you and your grace. Because your greatness intimidates them. Y'all <laughs> sitting out in the back of the, the church, and meanwhile, there might have been somebody up here who bullied you out of a seat. I want to tell you that your day is coming. I to take a good walk. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. God, God is about to move somebody out of overflow and bring them right into the flow. feel the weight of the serve. Hmm. We're not balanced. There used to be a time in which God, real people, had a burden in their hearts to serve. Like I have to help somebody. God laying something in my spirit. I need to feed the children in the neighborhood. We don't get those kind of messages anymore. Nobody's getting messages to feed children. Nobody getting messages now to go and pray for the sick. Nobody getting messages anymore for those kind of things. We get messages about uh, what size the apron is, what color it is, how big the pocket was. We get those kind of messages, but we're not getting messages to help somebody. The burden of service has left the church. Now, because of that, we are clouded in our vision of greatness. Now, instead of seeing godly greatness, we're looking at worldly greatness. In Matthew, that I read this, this evening, Matthew 20, verse 25, Jesus is warning the disciples. He said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles, that they exercise dominion over the people, that they are great in exercising authority upon them. But if you skip to the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 6, verse 15 and 16, it said that all the great men, all their titles, that they reach to a point on the great. Thank you. 
in which you two are going to have to hide. Hmm. And when you hide, the pressure will take you again. And more things you're going to beg it to fall on you. Because in the presence of a holy and a righteous God, our foolishness cannot stand up. Amen. Amen. We end up seeing our spiritual greatness with a clouded vision. Turn with me to Acts chapter 8. I want us to read it together out loud. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. One verse. When you have it, say amen, careful. <laughs> I love you all. I love you. I love you. I love you. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. More people have it? You have it? You have it? Let's read it together. One, two, three. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great moth. Some great one. Some of us are masquerading as great people. But you're only operating under the spirit of witchcraft. Because the Bible tells me that there's a there's a Simon and there's a Simon. Hmm. My question for the church is, are you Simon the Sorcerer or Simon Peter the Rock? Hmm. Because one builds his foundation on necromancy and walk. But the other builds the foundation on Christ the solid rise Job chapter 32 and 
verse 9, Job said something. He was dropping wisdom. He was dropping some gems. He said, great men are not always wise. <laughs> great men are not always wise. Um, that's because uh, we are delusional. Hmm. When your greatness comes from yourself, you operate in your own wisdom. Oh, God, God. When your greatness comes from men, you operate in their wisdom because you want to keep favor as much as possible so you do what they what they think is right. Even if you know deep down it ain't right, we're willing to do what they say because we want favor with people. But if you're going to live our Christian lives like that, I want to inform you right now, here is the diagnosis. You're delusional. <laughs> Jesus in John chapter 13, he, we read it a lot. Anytime the church is going to do a washing, we read the chapter, and I think sometimes we just breeze through it. We don't quite um, pay attention to what was happening, right? Um, if you look at verse, verse 5 of chapter 13, it says, after that, he poured, come on, y'all about this, y'all know this part. Hold on, let me say something about this verse. After that, he poured water into the river. After that, he poured water into the river. After that, he poured water into the river. And began to wash his eyes and his feet. And to wipe them in the towel, he began to wash his eyes and his feet. But if you pay attention and you visualize what Jesus had to do, right? It says he poured the water into the basin. And then, and then, he began, you know, you know, if, if, if I try to wash the mother's feet, China, I'm going to fall. The God of the universe. The creator of all things. The I am that I am. The living bread and the living water. The one who existed before the creation of the foundations of the earth. Reached to a point in his journey. In which God stooped. I'll say again for the people over here. God stooped. God in his infinite power. Glory. The problem with the church, nobody is willing to stop. Jesus said to them, If I then your Lord and Master can wash your feet, then you also one another's feet. We have forgotten that our call is simple. We have just got to Some of the people that we're trying to reach in the highways and bedges, the reason why they're not coming into the church is because we have been unwilling to stoop. figure out how to make their marriage work. They still trying to struggle and figure out how to make their kids listen. They still trying to struggle and figure out how to, to let go of the alcohol and maybe not need it as much because they're trying to use it to get away from dealing with problems that they have. They need you to stop! We so high and mighty, we so full of ourselves that we are no longer full of Jesus! I want you to say, Embrace the stoop. Embrace the stoop. You didn't 
get nothing else from what I said today. If you want to embrace the call of greatness, it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Embrace the call of greatness. Notice how I stress the word call of greatness. Because we focus on the call, but we not focus on the process to the greatness. If you want to embrace the call, I challenge the church to embrace the stew. Oh God, we feel. 